This is the foldable for today's lesson. Please cut on the solid lines and fold along the dashed lines. Under each flap, you will write the definition of the word. As we have gone over, plants have flowers, stems, leaves, and roots. Flowers are very beautiful and they smell lovely and it attracts pollinators to the flower, which aids in reproduction and helps the flower and the plant make a fruit. And within that fruit or on the exterior of that fruit, you can find seeds. I know that whenever I try to leave the house with my children, if there are any roses blooming outside of the front door, it takes a very long time to get to the car from the front door because the plants have these attractive flowers that are beautiful colors and all my kids wanna do is smell them and pick them, which is the whole purpose of a flower. Now leaves produce food, which we call glucose, using the process of photosynthesis. The roots anchor the plant to the ground, collect water and nutrients from the soil, as well as store food for the plant. The stem is composed of vascular tissue, which transports water and nutrients all over the plant. The xylem transports water up the plant and the phloem transports glucose down the plant. So this is my arrow garden. And here we have basil and parsley and we have dill, chives, these are chives, and we have more basil, different type of basil, and tomato plants over here. And all of these plants are angiosperms because they produce flowers and seeds. And if we look, we'll just use, I guess chives aren't the best example, but here we have basil. So we have this nice big basil leaf, nice big basil leaves. Look how big this basil leaf is, oh my. So we have nice big leaves and then under those leaves we have our stems. And under the plant, down here, what do you think's in there? Very good. The root system for the basil is a little big, so I'm going to just pull out the chives. Right, and there are the roots. These are fibrous roots. While digging in my garden, I came across this weed, which is the perfect specimen to show you what a taproot system looks like, which is one very large root and many smaller sized branched roots coming out of it. Another example of a taproot system is a carrot. Structure of a leaf. The cuticle is the waxy waterproof coating that protects the leaf and prevents excess water from evaporating out of the plant. It also protects the leaves from the sun. The leaf is also composed of the phloem and the xylem, which run through the leaf in a vein. So just like our veins have blood flowing through them, the plants have veins flowing through them, except those veins are composed of the phloem and the xylem, which transport glucose down for the phloem and for the xylem transports water up. In addition, there is the stomata, and the stomata is composed of guard cells which open and close. And so when those guard cells open, the stomata lets air in and out. Sometimes the guard cells are closed, in which case air is not going in and out of the leaf. You might recognize this spider wart plant from my classroom. 
If you look at the stomata on the underside of the leaf with a microscope, this is what you see. If you look closely, you can see that the stomata are currently open, meaning that the guard cells are separated, and it is allowing for air exchange in and out of the leaf. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. My favorite part of learning about plants is that I like to chew on them.